is an overwhelming feeling of frustration. In two years, we haven't been able to sit on the terrace. This is our trouble area, eh? Or felt comfortable putting the cars into the garage because of the leak. The uh, drainage out to the east drops on the outside are higher than the floor. Oh, we definitely have the signs of water, eh? It's been saturated with water. I noticed a little bit of mushrooms there. <laughs> Five times they've been back, and why didn't they fix it? Because in order to fix it, you have to take it apart and do it again. That angle they had, oh my god. We like the house, we just wish somebody else built it. My phone. Did they actually do this way? No. Yeah, we did it. Not liars. You want a good job in GPM shape? Okay, contract. I'm God, I love my job. <laughs> Well, we were looking for a house that was in the neighborhood of our son's school. There's a daycare uh, that's in the school, and we thought, hey, let's get closer to it. And so uh, we decided on this neighborhood. We really like the, the, the terrace, actually. We're on yes. like that first, yep. and, uh, and it was a move-up house for us. Lisa, Ron, nice to see you again. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. We're looking at a terrace here that is leaking into the garage. Uh, it's unfortunate, but we're going to find out why. We moved in on a, a Friday night, and it was raining heavily, and uh, the next day, Saturday morning, we came out to put, you know, the boxes for moving into the garage, and it was already, already leaking. It's just under two years old, and uh, that's a pretty bad sign when it was leaking right away. And they came a week later and said, well, it's probably just caulking around the posts of the terrace. I'll put some caulking up, but normally that's a maintenance issue, but I'll do it for you. And then, of course, it started leaking again. That didn't solve the problem. And uh, the drywall was falling down. The drywall well. was falling down pieces on the cars, and the water that was dripping, it had a little bit of nail rust in it over time, and we didn't want that dripping on the cars. It's like you lost 5% uh, of the value of the home. I haven't been able to use it for the last two years. Let's go upstairs, take a good look at it. OK. There has been five attempts to repair it. Five times the builder came and made attempts to, to seal the water leaks, and uh, but uh, to no avail, it's still leaking. So in two years, we haven't been able to sit on the terrace or felt comfortable putting the cars into the garage because uh, of the leak. So this is our trouble area, eh? Yes, this is it. You find the uh, water pools? Oh, yes. yeah, it does. Yes. Uh, in fact, you can see the water line right there. Oh, I can. How much water sits in here? I'd say about three inches after a good rain. It and just, it'll sit in here? It just stays there until it evaporates. You're kidding. You buy a new house. You, you move in thinking that this is going to be great. I'm not going to have the problems that I might have with an older house. And yet you still have these problems. And you think, OK, great. I've got a warranty and a builder that's behind me. Developer came in five different times to fix this and uh, couldn't fix it. I guess they really didn't want to take it apart. They did a, a series of patches. They first started off with doing caulking. They threw caulking around the post. That was their first. And then they came back and gradually started uh, putting more patches in. Well, do me a favor. Step back in so I can just pull this up and take sure. a look at it. Already getting warm. So this is one of their band-aids here? Yes. Yeah. There's a patch job over there. Roof tiles, and then they tar it all around it in both corners. OK. The scuppers, the uh, drainage out to the east drops on the outside, are higher than the floor. What it is doing, it's actually running up. It's not running down. Well, I don't notice that this is sloped at all. And this has to be sloped. Uh, it has to be angled out. We want to see it definitely teepeed up in the center so it runs out to the sides and then again grooved in here so it's a channel to run out to the scuppers. So we're flooding the garage, obviously. That's mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. OK, can we see it from underneath? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yep. I thought, what have I done? Because I had a house that wasn't leaking. And I bought a new house, not expecting that to happen. And uh, it did happen, and it wasn't being fixed. From day one that it leaked, they documented it, took pictures, wrote it down. Our mandate really is to protect new home buyers. And we do that by standing behind the warranty that builders must, by law, provide to all new home buyers. And every time we would get a leak, we would take a picture, send it to the builder and the home warranty program. So we did that over and over and over. We have hundreds of pictures. On October 1st, 2003, the Ontario New Home Warranty Program is introducing a new minimum customer service standard that all builders must comply with. For homes with a date of possession prior to October 1, there is a process and it is not as prescriptive. This is what upsets me. We're, we're looking at new home builders that will stall you for up to two years, and then the new home warranty program runs out five different times. The developer comes back here to fix this problem, and five different times they put a Band-Aid over a Band-Aid. Oh, we definitely have the signs of water, right? Yeah, pretty much on both sides of the garage. You can see where the water stays. 
And in the bottom there, that's where they uh, cut it out with a chainsaw and put those in, but it still didn't solve the problem. The water was still... They fire. replaced the scuppers? Yes, they did. You can see here where we took a red uh, marker and we made some circles for the builder to show them where leaks were definitely coming in. Look at that. We have so much water there, we're growing some uh, vegetables. I noticed a little bit of mushrooms there. <laughs> put in your spaghetti. One of the repairs they did, they had to replace the drywall here because the water was building up and the drywall collapsed. Finally, we said to the home warranty program, that's enough. How many attempts? Five, six, seven? Do we go to 12 attempts? You know, when do you cut it off and say, you know, that's enough? The builder made several attempts to repair the problem, uh, which was a leaky balcony. Um, for whatever reason, the builder was not able to make the repairs to our satisfaction. So in come new home warranty program, which makes me smile. And the warranty program made a suggestion that they incorporate a slope into the balcony in order to eliminate the the rain, the, the water build up on it, and the builder did not wish to do that. Five attempts at the developer to come back in here and fix this, I failed. And after that, the warranty program put the builder in breach of warranty. We've had enough. Let's call on the right guys to fix this. I guess that was our job. Let me go get the guys my tools. We're gonna take this place apart. All right. Okay? Thank you. We're gonna fix this so Thanks it doesn't leak much. anymore. Disaster fixed. Anytime that there was a leak, I would take a picture of it, write a letter, send it to the builder as well as to the warranty program. So they gave the builder five chances, and after five, it still is leaking. We're ready to play? Yeah, we're ready. There's we'll get a delicious. couple of guys upstairs. We have Steve with us. He's going to help us take off the siding. Uh, we'll get a couple guys in the garage. It's just unfortunate that we can't use this again, so we'll cut it in half to make it safe to take it down. We want the membrane to come up about three feet. Three feet of snow can be out here. And it will get through the vinyl siding and ruin the wall. My guess is, is they only come up about a foot off the floor. We'll see. All right, let's go down and we'll go into the garage and uh, start pulling down some drywall. So I'm going to cut this two feet back, OK? And we're going to pull down all the drywall, all this tape that should have been tuck tape. Bottom. They ran a strip of uh, six mil underneath. You know why? Just to hold the insulation in. If any water gets in there and sits in there, that'll be a moisture zone. That'll hold it. Well, as guessed, the membrane is just up. Not even a foot. Well, they have the tar paper in behind it, which is, again, it's a minimum coat. I'd rather see a Tyvek or another product like it. It's like a craft paper, basically asphalt saturated Isn't that, newspaper. Eh? Isn't that... So it's, I mean, I mean, to, this would just really just absorb water as opposed to shed it. It sucks, it's garbage, it's the minimum. Quite a few of these pieces of siding weren't even nailed. It looks like they nailed every other row. Save time, make money, and do it wrong. What we're gonna try and do is take up this membrane now. And what we want to do is definitely cut around the scuppers because we do not want to damage them. They call them scuppers. That is your drainage from the flat roof to outside, whether it goes into an east drop or whether it runs in a downspout and goes down to the ground. You know, the yeah. funny part is here is they put so many layers on this. Look at this, okay? Here's the low point. Here's the high point. Here's the higher point. Yeah, that water's going to go out all right. I don't think so. See all the water sitting in here? Look at this. Yeah. Sitting in between layers. Well, this is a joke. Our scupper, funny enough, definitely runs inward, so no water's gonna run out. I need the forefoot. Thank you. We're gonna take a measurement, make sure our three-quarter inch is gonna be just what we want. So I'm just gonna pull it up to this height. Uh, now we have a rundown. That's what I want. That angle they had. Oh my god. That's really bad angle. As much as I hate to, uh, we have to throw this wood out. It's not really what we're going to need now for the changes we've made, so it's a shame. I have to chuck it. Jesus, look at that move when you walk on it. This joist here is a crown up, okay? Now, with my crown down over here, you see how my level rocks? 
I mean, what we have is a floor that goes like this, and that's just going to create a puddle. This crown down, you can see this gap right here. If all our crowns were up, we'd have a perfectly true floor, which is what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to put down the plywood over top of this, and no matter how I want to look at this, I'm going to have a gully here, because I'm going to screw down to that floor joist. Grab the six-foot level. I want you to hit every joist, go underneath, find the ones that don't have the crowns, and that's how many we need. So I do a little bit of laminating. I bring that floor up, and I bake it true again, and then I do my slopes. We all have our squares, we all have our levels, and we all have our common sense. But when you leave it all at home, you have a house just like this one. Here's a crown down. See what we're getting? What we're going to do is laminate four eight foot two by eights with the crown up against the other joist. We pull out the braces. We're going to put it in beside the other one and blow it in with our guns. And the idea is now that we'll have the crown up, you will see the difference when I do this. What we're doing here is we're laminating. We're adding some uh, premium construction adhesive here. And this will just give us that little extra. Now we have chemical and mechanical support. This is the, the difference. That's, that's the bow on the floor that he's talking about. Now, a lot of the carpenters out there are going to say, that's not much. But now, we're not going to have a puddle of water up there. So that is a lot. What we're going to do is we're going to take our three inch strips, and screw them down. This is half inch. Screw them down on the outside. Do a quarter inch strip here, which from half inch to quarter inch gives us the run we want this way. a very gradual slope. So we've cupped it this way. That's what we want. Half inch to quarter inch all the way down to nothing is going to give us the run this way, which I double checked on the scupper, and we have it. A couple pieces of wood, a couple bucks. Boy, we fixed it. We'll just uh, get these screws in, and we'll uh, break for lunch. All right. Get the corners in, get the membrane down. So we're gonna make this deck out of cedar. Let's surprise them. Uh, let's get a drywall knife. Let's get a knife. That's good. Rather than using tape as a corner bead, which is like totally wrong, <laughs> we're gonna corner bead it so we get a nice plaster on it. Uh, the roofing company that's going to put down the new membrane, uh, the three layers the way it should have been with the protection board. They get it closed in again with the uh, siding. Where's my hammer? It's basically like a liquid ash bolt. It's uh, designed to be quick drying, so there's not a lot of downtime. It's uh, basically just going to allow the new membrane to adhere better to the, the wood substrate. That's the protector board. It's a uh, one eighth of an inch uh, in thickness. It's basically just uh, asphalt coated fiberglass. So it gives us two two good things. It's a fire retardant for uh, torching and uh, really a protection board as well. Yes. We're, we're going to bring the membrane up to about the, uh, the point where the, the primer stops. OK. Uh, the ice and water uh, membrane will then come down over the mem membrane, good. and then the siding will be applied. Good, good, good. Liquid tar and gravel roofs are really uh, primarily used now uh, for just large commercial applications. Day three, the roofers were here on the weekend and uh, got up most of the siding, weather eye shield, pretty well finished. They just have a couple more things to do, a little bit of the siding on the front here. All right, well, we only have a little bit of water sitting here, and that's in the overlaps. That's to be expected. We had no, uh, no leakage at all from this huge storm that we had yesterday, and that's not bad. I'm fine with that. Our uh, top granulated layer here is uh, you know, overlapping each piece, so we're going to have a small bit of water sit there, but it's not three inches, and this should evaporate in the same day. 
See, they have the weather and ice shield up underneath the flashing right down over top of the membrane. So that makes me happy. We have tar paper. Paper, tar paper, weather and ice shield. Which one sounds better? It's a little more money, but 10 times better. So instead of pressure treated, we're going to go cedar. Uh, we're going to run 16 inch on center, four pieces, OK? We're going to run our, our top boards with an overhang. And each and every one of them, by the time we lay down the three frames with our top boards, they'll overlap. Yeah. So it'll look like one piece. Yeah. Quarters. So what we'll do is we'll cut every single one of them at 53 inches. We'll set the guide so that they're precise. It's just going to look beautiful. Five, four, six. leaking out the door. So they come in in the weeping area. OK, this is the drainage. And that means if water gets down in there, it's supposed to drain out. And they cocked over the weeping areas. When this door is closed and the rain beats from the east, you can see the dirt in there, which shows rain is getting in. I'm using a uh, clear silicone on this because it's, it was just sitting there, so we want it to bond in place as well as I want it watertight. So this is just perfect to put a bead across. They didn't even bother trying to make sure it was set precisely in place, which is a bit of an issue because it leaked at the door. See, what we want is to be up over, just like that. So we see the silicone that comes up, and nothing can drive in. This is a drip edge. When the rain hits us, we want it to come down and away from the threshold and away from the corners. So I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm just going to cock across the top of that, a very small bead, now that I have it in place, and seal it. What I like about this, it looks like one piece, but it's three pieces. And all in that way, he has no problems picking up one piece in the spring, sweep it all off and clean it up. I'm keeping it away from the edges. I don't want to pierce the edge. So we, this way, it keeps it up off it, gives it drainage, and does what we want it to do. OK, let's get screws right down the center on the two boards. That'll take away our creek. Good job, sir. Made it to fit. All right. Homeowners at home. Oh, this is amazing. Lisa, come take a look. At the, uh, oh, let me just close this. As you can see, we have it all closed in, hand plastered. This looks great. So clean and neat. It is still a little wet, so that's drying. We have a nice thick coat on that. Right. That's great. That's amazing. I mean, just the fact that we don't have to look at the water stains that were starting to grow over time and spreading all over, and the clump of mushrooms that had grown on the wood. One thing we did do is we took your tracks down, and we had cut the vertical pieces, because they had them pierced through the drywall. And all they did was plaster around it. So yeah. this way, it's completely sealed, and we don't have to worry about gases getting up in That's your great. house. Right. That's great. That's Thank great. Thank you. You've got a nice corner yeah. made up there, so amazing. it really cleans it up. It's just amazing. funny that they, they didn't do it. Let's go see the gold. That's upstairs. All right. This is what I like. Wow. Wow, that's nice. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, this is just, that. A, just a little surprise. Oh, that way you can sit out here. We've and never sat out here before. Oh, my wow. gosh. Wow. 
Well, this is made in three pieces, so you can pull it up either piece you want. It looks like it's one piece, but it's three it does. pieces. It does. We brought up the center of the floor, and we obviously we leveled your scuppers down instead of up, which is what they were. If anything was running water in. Now the membrane underneath, we have three layers. So we put down the protection boards. We got the center layer, the top layer on top, and we even put up a weather and ice shield underneath this rather than tar right. paper. That's all the way around, so it's well protected. Nice. Yeah. Like I said, after two years, no garage, no terrace, the space is there, we could never use it. You paid for it and you couldn't use it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, this is this is wonderful. Uh, one thing about the caulking out here that I was a little disappointed with, uh, there was a few areas that were missing caulking. Okay. One of them was up here, and actually above this one was not caulked. Right. And I had to touch up around here. So I made also, sure. You did all that for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. I, I just wanted to make sure this was yeah. watertight. And again, keep your eye on the door here. I did fix the bottom of it. Right. But really, I'm against just putting in a, a door like this without a screen door, especially when we have no canopy over top protecting. Yes. It. Right. Yeah. So if it does rain hard, we want it from the east, then right. inspect the carpet. If you get a few drops in there, please call in a door guy and get it. Okay, you know, okay. A, yeah. a storm a storm bill. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Well, job's finished. It's watertight. Out of all these homes, it's probably the only one. Mike, if you're ever in a neighborhood, drop by. This house is open to you anytime. I just might do that. Okay. Never know. I might have to fix one of these <laughs> other <of> these houses. <laughs> Keep an eye on it, take your pictures, document it. Man, don't give up on it. Don't just think that it's going to go away, because it's not going to go away. This is a small problem starting quickly. You want to be on top of it, and you want to start raising a fuss. It's just as simple as that. It's perfect. It sure is. That's what I like to hear. I, I tell the clients, hold back 10% for 45 days until you're happy. Once you're happy, everything's fine, there's not a problem, then you pay me. Submit it in the mail. I mean, That's great. After two years, I have we to can thank you. You here. are welcome, so sir. You're very welcome. Just We've, uh, fantastic. You're very fantastic. welcome. Oh my thank goodness. You. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. This is fantastic. Why isn't that there a 10% hold back on the developers? That uh, if there is a problem, get back in there and fix it. Once you fixed it, then you get your money. Thank <laughs> you.